What's up guys? Today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial for you guys on how to get the best audio for your videos. There's three basic types of microphones that we use for all our videos. The first one is a shotgun mic. A shotgun mic is uh, a very directional mic and whatever you aim it at, you'll pick up that sound. It's really good for on-set work. And a condenser microphone is really, really good for doing voiceover or narration. The third type of microphone we use is called a lav microphone. This is a small microphone that's wirelessly transmitting to a receiver elsewhere, so I can walk around freely, do whatever I want, and we don't need someone like uh, Nico here following me around with a, a big microphone setup at all times. So let's break down the shotgun mic. You can be aiming it at someone's face for a voice, you can aim it at the ground for like the sound of an object moving, whatever. The boom pole. Having an extending arm, uh, you, can, you can get one or you can make one by just taping a microphone to a, uh, like a broom or something like that or a, a bamboo stick as we used to do. And what that allows you to do is get in creative spaces, do everything you want and uh, get good audio while doing it. Shotgun mics work completely on proximity and that's why the boom pole is important because as you'll see if I start walking away from the shotgun mic here, the audio gets really bad, and that's why you need that arm to be able to get in there, get on the edge of frame, and capture the best audio. The shock mount works by uh, holding and grasping the microphone within like a series of like rubber bands and stuff, so that way no physical objects are hitting it. It removes the sound of your fingers sliding on here. Obviously, we're trying to mess it up so you'll hear the bad audio here but it generally removes the sound of your hands shaking the microphone and all the bumps that normally come from moving a microphone around. A uh, wind sock. Right now, this, this will prevent a little bit of wind, but if you're outside in a windy environment, you want something a little more heavy duty, we're gonna be putting a dead cat on there. Basically, this just acts as a barrier to break up the wind and air and make it so that uh, wind doesn't affect you from uh, getting clean audio. There's also an alternative there. If you're in a pinch and you really need something, uh, bundling up some socks on here will definitely help. However, these don't work as well and they will kind of start to mute your audio a little bit. Another reason shotgun mics are great for onset use is because they are directional. It's actually balancing out the sounds coming in from the front while trying to mute out so uh, sounds coming from like sides and behind it. That's what really helps you aim it and kind of choose which audio source you want to be picking from. That's why generally you want the microphone to be above pointing down because then you're just getting the ground muting all the audio and the audio from your actor. When you're like this, you're going to be picking up airplanes in the sky and wind noise. And when you're from the side, you're getting all the sound bouncing off the walls of the room. So this is me talking with it pointed directly at my face. And then as you hear, it sounds like crap. And I might as well just hit cut on the camera here because uh, my whole movie's ruined. <laughs> cool. Microphone number two is the condenser mic. The condenser mic is great, as I said, for voiceover and narration because you can get really close to it and you can sound like you're talking in someone's brain because you're so present within their ears. So to break down the parts of a condenser mic, the main one is a depopper screen. All this is doing is the same thing that the windsock or dead cat is. It's preventing the little, little pieces of like air from going into the microphone and it's breaking that up. If you don't have one of these or you can't afford that, put a sock on it. When we were recording the voiceover and narration for Freddie and Brandon's Metal Gear Rising video, this is actually the setup we use to record the official voiceover artist who does Raiden, but he didn't seem to mind. Our third microphone that we discussed is the lav microphone. It's a small discrete microphone that you can wear with you. It's really good for events, which is why we use these for land parties. So we can just hook everyone up and they can walk around and do whatever. And we're always capturing their voice. If you're trying to be discreet with the amount of camera gear and people you have on set, sometimes it's really nice to have just a little hidden microphone on somebody. So that way when you're out on the street with the camera, you don't really draw that much attention to yourself. Each microphone kind of has its own use and its own place for shooting videos. But the one thing you need to consider with each one is that they are all extremely sensitive to general noise and sounds in the, in the environment. We can focus on what we want to listen to. So I can hear someone's voice across the room if I focus on listening to it. But the microphone can't do that. It picks up everything and anything that's within its range. And you want to close windows, you want to turn off computers if you have really loud fans, and just generally know that if you can hear a sound, the microphone can probably hear it way better. This is a huge factor with airplanes, vehicles, cars. So just be aware of that when using these microphones. Hey kid, you want to learn some tricks about audio? There's no silence on film. When people stop talking, it doesn't go completely silent. That sounds really weird. And that is why it's important to use room tone. while on the location or set that you're on, 
you want to record just a few, like 10, 15 seconds of just what it naturally sounds like to be there to fill up little gaps while editing. There's a lot of stuff going on. We have an open window. You can hear the freeway. We have computers with fans that are louder than a freaking gunshot. You wouldn't probably hear that unless I stopped talking. Otherwise, it sounds a little bit like this when there's gaps in my voice. Pretty awkward. Trick number two. We've mentioned this in a few other videos, but we'll mention it again because it's really useful. If you are really in a pinch and you really need a microphone or you need to get someone's clean audio, use your own phone. The little microphone in here is actually really high quality. And as long as the uh, proximity is, is close to someone's face or voice, you'll be capturing something pretty good that you can use. The one thing you need to make sure you're aware of is you'll need to sync it. One other thing a phone can be really useful for is if you have a dialogue scene at a table and people are discussing, it's really easy to just set the phone on the table and hide it and then you get nice and clear audio from the people as long as they aren't smacking the table. Let's say we're on set and uh, Nico, for some reason, accidentally messes up the microphone and doesn't have it pointed at me. I've got to dub everything. I've got to use something that's called ADR. You're just essentially re-recording the voices for everything. A lot of people typically will then move to a microphone like this because it's a pretty simple desk setup and they'll just record the voice like this. However, the biggest issue is that these microphones all interpret sound completely differently. If you want to make stuff sound natural and sound like it was actually on set and recorded there, you'll probably want to use the same microphone you were recording everything else with. So you don't want to use this one. You actually want to set up this microphone on your desk or wherever you want to record these additional voices and record all the audio and dialogue with that. If any of you guys are wondering what microphones we specifically use, we'll have uh, the actual names in the description. But for the most part, any good shotgun mic, any condenser mic, mostly any Sennheiser lav mic or any other decent lav mic, they all kind of work the same. Mm -hmm. So don't stress out too much about which one you're getting. Lavs are very expensive because the wireless technology within them, it's expensive. You can probably get used ones for cheap. Condenser mics, these are actually, I would say, some of the most inexpensive ones. It was 60 bucks, pretty reasonable. Shotgun mics, on the other hand, though, this one, it was actually around $250. I've used a couple in my life, but this is the one that I've used the most. That's the one I'm comfortable using. Quick odds and ends to think about. How are you recording your audio? Is it going straight into your camera? Or are you going into an external recorder? A lot of cameras can record audio straight into them, but you may find yourself needing to record into an external recorder. Things like the Zoom recorders, like the H4n, or they have a new one. Those work great. And like we did at the beginning of this piece, when you start rolling, roll the audio, roll the camera, point them both at the same thing, like an actor or one of those clapboards and just have them <laughs> clap. And that spike is where you can sync up the audio and everything will work great. There's also programs like Pluralize and I think there's st stuff actually built into Adobe Premiere that will automatically sync up audio tracks if you have a scratch audio track from the camera and a good high quality recording on an external recorder. Our microphones use XLR cables. They're super cheap on monoprice.com. Some microphones, like uh, going into a DSLR camera, use an eighth inch connection instead. I hope this answers some of your long running questions on audio, microphones, and the like. If you have more questions, feel free to hit us up on Twitter. Maybe even leave a question in the comments and we'll try and answer everything we can. Peace out.